my name is uh, Stephanie Mendoza. I've been going by Sam um, a lot more lately. Uh, so it, it's almost kind of odd to hear my name sometimes, um, but you guys can feel free to call me whatever uh, is more comfortable to you. Um, <laughs> So uh, when I first got to Portland, I actually, um, I didn't intend to live here. I was just coming through for some tech classes and I had every intention to return to Texas uh, to finish those off. But um, after about a month of traveling around the Northwest and not doing what I initially intended to come to Portland to do, I found myself back. And uh, literally the next day, I noticed that I had negative $600 in my bank account and that my student loans had kicked in uh, into repayment. And there was no way out. Um, so I had n no real friends in this city and um, again, was intending to go home within a few days. I found myself living in my car outside of random parks and um, using public facilities everywhere. And fortunately, I had a background in art and technology that I could weasel my way into various hacker spaces and maker spaces, uh, places like Control H and Make Think Code, um, which welcomed me with open arms. Um, and, uh, you know, regardless of whether they knew what my living situation was. Um, as a 3D artist, uh, I found myself immediately attracted to VR, but once again, having not even enough money to feed myself. Um, I was restricted until I got a scholarship to the Mozilla View Source Conference back in 2015 when they were unleash or unveiling A-Frame. And I was fortunate enough to find myself in one of Josh Carpenter's talks uh, where he was really excited about showing off this new framework that allowed anyone, uh, regardless of your status to have access to VR because of its cross-platform uh, capabilities. So within a year of building myself up on my laptop, living out of my car, living out of hacker spaces, uh, I find myself looking like this. So <laughs> this is my avatar, uh, at least a frequently used avatar. Um, so sadly, like GIF is not playing. Um, but I, I call it Fugaz, it's an alibrije, which is a creature of a 1930s fever dream and often a subject of folk art in Mexico. And uh, I, you know, enjoy having claws and a tail. I almost suffer from, uh, I, I wouldn't say suffer, but I, I almost get like these light feelings of body dysmorphia when I come out of social VR where I'm like, where did my claws go? Where's my tail? Why can't I fly anymore? Like, you know, I want to get to the top of that building to see the parade, but I can't, and my brain doesn't want to make those connections. Um, you know, it, and it's like, and I also worry about turning around sometimes. I'm like, oh man, am I gonna hit something? Am I gonna knock it over? It's like the kind of self-awareness that you wish your golden retriever had. But <laughs> um, yeah, and so this, these things affect you as you exit the digital world. So do a lot of your experiences, your personal experiences. And over time you do realize that like you are gaining new levels of awareness and like it, you're able to train yourself in certain ways that you didn't initially expect that caught me completely off guard, like my lack of uh, fear of heights now that I accidentally trained myself out of. I used to be terrified of heights. Or even public speaking, when I gave my first talk, uh, my first big talk in front of a couple hundred people, I actually simulated the room in Unity that I was gonna give that lecture in and then practiced and messed up multiple times in that simulation and my audience was like zombies and tigers and like men in blue business suits and cops and stuff. <laughs> like whatever I, whatever I could find free on the asset store to entertain my like, you know, wild <laughs> little girls with like squirt bottles and stuff and I'm just like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, it made me like not, afraid of that like, you know, out on the savannah feeling. But that directed action learning can be used against us as well for like advertising and marketing and like straight up brainwashing. Um, so I, I have this like sort of, I, I'd managed to condense it down to a small thesis where it's like the digital world and the lessons learned in it are not confined to a single simulated space, be it your experience in the environment or the experience that you have uh, becoming something completely new in these territories um, when you choose to. And, and becoming something that you absolutely choose to be, which is a, a new paradigm for us, especially now considering like how um, you know, trans people are under attack by the administration. Like you, this is a space where you can go and, and literally be anyone that you feel, anything that you feel. Um, so part of that awareness has always been, you know, present 
not just in virtual spaces, but in art in general. And so like, I just kind of wanted to go down why I was able to make that leap from uh, like absolute destitute homelessness, like sleeping in front of uh, rich people's houses on Mount Tabor because they had really nice views <laughs> and like clean bathrooms. Um, so number one, your browser is a portal. And as time passes, we will come to this realization more and more that we will literally be stepping through these digital portals or those digital portals will be exiting <laughs> into our space through mixed reality. Um, but as soon as you realize that, that you'll, the visual, like visualizing cyberspace will be much easier. <laughs> I mean, I think most of us as technologists already acknowledge this. Um, web VR is cross-platform, so again, if you don't have a headset at all, um, then you, you can use your desktop, you can go to the library if you absolutely must, um, if you're that driven. Um, it's a free open source framework, so again, no cost to anybody, broken, like very broke and starving artist friendly. Um, and then you can get free hosting off of uh, any, uh, any number of uh, platforms. My favorites are those uh, listed above, so like Glitch, uh, shout out to NeoCities um, because this is what I got started on and um, it's run by a very close friend of mine and then um, CodePen also which automatically will like update your um, sketch so you have like multiple windows and you're like writing your code and then it's like updating live and allows you to iterate and allows you to fork and all three of these websites have that sort of power behind them, uh, creative power, and crea creative capabilities. Um, and then finally, this is something that I'm still like getting into, but I see spreading and I'm very excited about, uh, which is the distributed web um, and like VR's, uh, pre like the excitement about VR in distributed web technologies, where uh, it, it's the idea that HTTPS is broken and that these highly centralized systems, or like the way that the net has centralized itself is like counterproductive to the initial uh, philosophy of the web of being decentralized, of being like open to everyone and not owned by these like central powers. Um, and so like, it, which is obviously a huge issue when it comes to immersing yourself and like putting your entire body in these digital spaces that are then run by the same people who are doing things like Facebook, for instance, and like what kind of power are you giving them over you when you're completely immersed inside of Facebook? It, it's, um, you know, it's something that I choose not to think about and choose not to participate in. Uh, because these things are available and, and you just, you know, it takes a weekend to learn. Um, so uh, let's, you know, uh, I don't know how many of y'all are actual programmers and some of y'all might have seen this before, so I might be, you know, redundant, but some of y'all have never seen this at all, so I can, like, give you guys a small taste of what it is to be a web VR developer um, or artist, however you choose to call yourself. But this is kind of all that it takes. You have your basic HTML page and your head, uh, your header that's initializing everything. Um, A-frame's actually up to 8.0, so <laughs> like just change that six to an eight. Uh, but yeah, you know, you have your title, your your meta content, and then all you need is that A-frame script, and you just get that on their documentation page. Just type it into Google, um, and then you get to the meat of it in your body. Just all you have to do is open up a scene inside of it. Anyone who's familiar with like 3D or Unity that's familiar with this concept, where you build your world inside of your scene. And then after you've opened up your scene, uh, everything inside of that scene relies on three coordinates, your X, your Y, and your Z, um, for your position, your rotation, and uh, your scaling as well. Um, so if you notice over there, I have it highlighted, the X is red, the Y is green, and the Z is blue. Um, and it, it's just, you just input it there, and there's even a, um, there's, a, what do you call it? A, inspector now that allows you to literally just like pull it up like it's normal 3D software and reach in and like edit things and then come out and like update the code that way, which is a, a little bit more hands-on for people who are less um, programming oriented. Um, but other than that, I mean, this is extremely like feasible for someone again in a weekend to pick up and then to like really lift themselves out of whatever rut they're in if that's the issue or, you know, just to have a new hobby or to have a new space to explore because again, VR is very exciting, like mixed reality is very exciting territory and um, we need more people, more artists in there who are willing to come at it from like less of a, like a, like a capitalist, like make money perspective and more of a, a theory, theoretical like, hey, this is what it's doing to humanity, like anthropological perspective. Um, because there is no media theory in this space, or at least there, there is very little. And what does come out comes out as it's experienced. Um, so we're like right on the cutting edge of this. Um, 
This is the other thing that I really love about it is that uh, as someone who was living in their car, I owned very little, and so in cyberspace I could have whatever I wanted. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't watch Ready Player One because it's too close to home. Um, so yeah, the, some really quick free resources that uh, you can, you know, I'm pretty sure all y'all are good and have jobs or students and stuff and can have better tools, but this is for like anyone who, again, has very little. Uh, Blender, free 3D editing software, absolutely amazing. Like, oh man, I love Blender. Like, I have access to all the highest and like 3D modeling software. Blender is still like my my love. <laughs> um, Make Human is a really good editing tool for making like humanoid characters. There's like more than a few of these now, um, but that was the one that I uh, became really familiar with. And you guys can just all like you know, I, I forget what the other one was called. Um, like Morph, like Mesh, Morph 3D, I think it's Morph 3D. Um, after that, uh, so you will you can do a lot of scavenger hunting on Sketchfab and Thingiverse, uh, because it, it's just this massive repository of 3D uh, models, uh, like this apple tart, or not apple tart, this uh, fruit tart that is in the background, <laughs> and um, you know, many other wonderful things. Uh, and then, you know, it'll spit it out in any number of formats, but uh, right now GLTF, or that one at the end, is coming out as like the .jpeg for 3D models on the web. And it, I love it, because it makes my life easy and I don't have to go out and do file conversions, <laughs> or like format conversions, which are really, really annoying. And then I want to say RIP 123D Catch, but there's, again, also other free software that allows you to do photogrammetry to like 3D scan and capture your own real world. Uh, objects, so then you can digitize them and then infinitely duplicate them as you see fit. And you can get, you know, captures of these fancy plates of cheese, of, of fromage de Noël, uh, or, you know, this burnt croissant that you, like, <laughs> that you, you, you kind of messed up your dinner and you're like, well, I don't want it to completely go to waste, and so... <laughs> <laughs> And you know, with all of these things, you can synthesize them into. Uh, this was my first experience. I was really into vaporwave when um, when I first got to Portland, and there were all these like YouTube vaporwave mixes. And there's one that was like this crazy underground Chinese like drag or lion like palm tree like ocean experience. And I was like, I can make that in 3D, and then I can go inside of it. And so I did, <laughs> um, and uh, I added a couple of things. Like I really like the the connected to America Online, all the '90s like Windows, like just toss everywhere. It's like, ha ha, <laughs> it's all unraveling. Um, yeah, or this free store because again, I, I, uh, I'm kind of a little bit of an anarchist sometimes, and I like everything to be free, and I like people to just do whatever they want with whatever they want. Um, and this is one really good way to practice that in real time. And um, so, you know, this isn't the only free store. Again, Sketchfab is like by far king of it <laughs> at the moment because uh, you can jump in there and you can um, explore like all of those models in VR. Uh, and they have their own applications for it, which are great. And they are like totally compatible with the sort of like in uh, the compositors that exist in like high end VR headsets that allow you to like flip back and forth between programs. So it is kind of like going to a store and shopping. Um, crazy where that we're at that point but it happened um, so I, I guess my last part is is like but even though all this is going on can VR really be free because just because I figured it out because I had that privilege of having like a, a college degree even though it you know did cause all of this to happen that I guess that's the point of a college degree um, <laughs> maybe just not linearly but uh, you know not everyone has that not everyone has the aptitude to like want to program, to tell themselves that they can do these things even though they're so foreign. Even, and, and though while you step in, they seem familiar, it's like that transition hasn't fully happened for our gener like the current generation of developers or of people who are aspiring to be artists and developers in this space. Um, so I did have a small project uh, that I made as my own personal solution to this. Um, it doesn't, it still exists, but the domain name got squatted on me and I didn't catch it on time, so, so I, I, I have had to remove that. Um, and, I, I, and I will be putting it back up under a new domain name, it's just, uh, I'll get to it. But this was a map that I made of Portland's VR spaces and there were like about seven or eight of them at the time of last year, I, I think before I was hired to actually build a VR lab, so I no longer need to like go and find VR labs. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, big uh, reveal. I've actually never owned my own headset either. 
Uh, I've always just, you know, sought out the technology wherever I could find it because, again, I, yeah, I've never had as much as I do now. But um, this is really all it takes is that these spaces do exist and people can be brought to them. Uh, it can be hostile at first, but you get, you, you just like, you really get your sea legs in this space. Um, but yeah, you know, anything like volunteering, uh, just knowing you're, you're just knowing how to talk shop will get you in and get anyone else in. If you want to lend someone a helping hand, you, you all have the power to do this. Um, I find myself doing it for a lot of people too. Um, but then I went out and built this in 3D space and then like in, in social VR to show people from all over the world how cool Portland was. And uh, then I made a web VR version, but again, it's not currently accessible, so I will be throwing the new uh, domain name back up whenever that does get, um, whenever I do acquire a new one. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is, this is uh, my contact info, but uh, yeah, thank you all. <laughs>